Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today we will be talking on lateral wall of nose. I am Dr. Daksha Dikshit, Professor of Anatomy from Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College, Kaili Academy of Higher Education and Research, Belagavi. We will look into a case scenario. A 25 year old female presented with a complaint of frontal headache and thick purulent discharge from the nose since the past two days. The headache typically starts on waking, gradually increases and reaches a peak by midday and then starts subsiding. The clinical diagnosis was of frontal sinusitis. We will be discussing the lateral wall of nose under these following headings. Introduction, nasal cavity, roof floor, medial and lateral walls, lateral wall, composition, parts and features, the concave, meatesis and openings, blood supply that is arterial supply and venous drainage, the lymphatic drainage, nerve supply and finally the applied anatomy. Introduction, the nasal cavity is part of the upper respiratory tract. The olfactory epithelium around the roof is what carries the sense of smell or the olfactory sensations. The mucosa lines the inner surface of the nasal cavity. The upper part of the nasal cavity is lined by the olfactory epithelium while the lower part of the nasal cavity is lined by the respiratory epithelium. The nasal cavity begins at the nostrils or the anterior nares and ends at the posterior nares also called as the coine where it communicates with the nasopharynx. Now the nasal cavity as is seen here is made up of a roof, a floor, a medial wall which is a nasal septum and the lateral wall. The picture here shows you the nasal cavity. This superior end is the roof. The inferior end is the floor. This is the medial wall or the nasal septum which in majority of us is deviated to either the right or the left side. And what we see here sloping downwards and laterally is a lateral wall of the nasal cavity. As is seen here, this lateral wall is further superimposed or strengthened by three curved bony projections which are known as the nasal concave or the turbinates. Let us study the roof of the nasal cavity. The roof is formed in the central part by the ethmoid bone that is the cribriform plate of ethmoid. Anterior sloping part is formed by the frontal bone and the nasal bone while the posterior sloping part is contributed by the basisphenoid and the basi occiput. The same is seen here in this picture. This is the roof of the nasal cavity. It is formed anteriorly by the nasal bone and the frontal bone. The central part is formed by the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone while the posterior sloping part is formed by the basisphenoid and the basi occiput. Those are the structures forming the roof of the nasal cavity. The floor of the nasal cavity is nothing but the hard palate which separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. 
and it is formed anteriorly by the palatine process of maxilla bone and posteriorly by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. The same is seen in this picture. This is the floor of the nasal cavity formed in the anterior two thirds by the palatine process of maxilla and in the posterior one third it is formed by the horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Let us now see the medial wall or the nasal septum. The nasal septum is composed of two bones and two cartilages. The two bones are the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone postero superiorly and postero inferiorly is the vomer. The two cartilages, the septal cartilage antero inferiorly and the lower nasal cartilage further antero inferiorly. This picture shows a schematic picture of the composition of the nasal septum. Postero superiorly we see the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone. Postero inferiorly is the midline vomer bone. Antero inferiorly we see the septal cartilage and further anterior inferiorly is the lower nasal cartilage. Thus two bones and two cartilages comprise the nasal septum. The same is seen here in this picture. Postero superiorly perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone, postero inferiorly vomer and antero inferiorly septal cartilage and the lower nasal cartilage. Let us revise these compositions with the help of another picture. This is a reverse image as compared to the previous one. So here this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part. So here postero superiorly we see the perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone, postero inferiorly is vomer, antero inferiorly septal cartilage and the lower nasal cartilage. So this is the nasal septum or the medial wall of the nasal cavity. The lateral wall has got three components, skeletal, cartilage and cuticular. The skeletal components are made up of the maxilla bone, the ethmoid, palatine bone, inferior nasal concha which is an independent bone, the lacrimal bone, nasal bone and the medial pterygoid plate. The cartilaginous component is formed by the lateral nasal cartilage. These are two cartilages superior and inferior and by two to three small LR cartilages. The cuticular part is fibro fatty tissue which is seen at the ala of the nose. Let us see these components. This picture shows us the bony cartilaginous and cuticular components. Let us see the cartilaginous components. Anteriorly we have the superior nasal cartilage, the inferior nasal cartilage and two to three alar cartilages. Superior nasal cartilage, inferior nasal cartilage and two to three alar cartilages. The bony components. What we see here anterior most is the nasal bone, the lacrimal bone, the frontal process of maxilla, the ethmoid bone and the labyrinth of ethmoid which gives rise to the superior nasal concha and the medial nasal concha, the inferior nasal concha which is an independent bone. Posteriorly we have the perpendicular plate of palatine bone and the medial pterygoid plate. These are the bony and the cartilaginous components of the lateral wall of the nose. Whereas what we see here anterior most near the ala of the nose is the cuticular part composed of fibro fatty tissue covered by skin containing small fine hair which are known as vibrissae. Another picture showing us the parts of the lateral wall of nose. The lateral wall of nose has got three curved pro bony projections which are known as the concha. The superior and the middle concha 
are parts coming from the labyrinth of the ethmoid bone while the inferior nasal concha is an independent bone. These conchae divide the lateral wall into three parts, vestibule, atrium and the region of conchae and meatae. The same can be seen in this picture. What we see here are the three nasal conchae. This is the superior nasal concha. This is the middle nasal concha which is the largest or the longest and this here is the inferior nasal concha. When we go to the area near the anterior nares, this small curved area is what constitutes the vestibule of the nose. It is demarcated superiorly by a mucocutaneous ridge which is known as the lanin nasi. Just above this is a roomy area which is known as the atrium. It is nothing but the anterior part of the space below the middle nasal concha. The space below the middle nasal concha is known as the middle meatus. An anterior part of the middle meatus is what forms the atrium. Superior part of the atrium is again demarcated by a mucosal ridge which is directed downwards and forwards called as the agar nasi. So these are the three parts of the lateral wall of the nose. Anteriorly is the vestibule near the anterior nair. Posterior to it is the atrium which is the anterior part of the middle meatus and posterior is the region which contains the conchae and the meatae. We have seen three concha that is the superior nasal concha, the middle nasal concha and the inferior nasal concha. Each concha overrides or covers a space below it and that space is known as the meatus. So, a space Below the inferior nasal concha will be the inferior meatus. The space below the middle nasal concha will be the middle meatus and the space below the superior nasal concha will be the superior meatus. Similarly, there is a space above the superior nasal concha and below the roof of the nasal cavity and that is known as the supreme meatus or the sphenoidal recess or the sphenoethmoidal recess. What we see posterior most here is the posterior nair or the coina and behind that lies the nasopharynx. Another picture showing us the parts of the lateral wall of the nose. Also seen are the alar cartilages anteriorly and the lateral nasal cartilage, postero superior to the alar cartilages. This is the area of the lateral wall of the nose showing us the three conchae, superior concha, the middle concha and the inferior concha. Let us now see further features of the lateral wall. Starting from the anterior nair, we see the vestibule. This is the fibrofat tissue covered by skin, lined by fine hair, which are the vibrissae. We can see it demarcated by a mucocutaneous ridge known as the lamin nasi. More postero superior to the vestibule is the atrium. Atrium again being demarcated by a mucocutaneous ridge known as the agar nasi. Marked as 1, 2 and 3 are the three nasal conchae, superior, middle and inferior. And seen deep to each are the meatae, the superior meatus, the middle meatus and the inferior meatus. Behind the posterior nair, we see the nasopharynx which shows opening of the auditory tube. Also seen in this picture, anteriorly is the frontal sinus and at the posterior end of the roof we see the sphenoidal air sinus. 
moving on to see the features of the vestibule. Vestibule as I said is the antero inferior part of the lateral wall of the nose. Portion of it is covered by skin with fine hair known as vibrissae. Postero superior to it is the atrium. Dilated portion which is continuous with the middle meatus posteriorly and it is limited by a mucosal fold which is directed downwards and forwards known as the agar nasi. Now we see the concave and the meatuses. The concave also known as turbinates are three in number the superior, middle and the inferior concha. Sometimes there may be one more concha which is seen that is the supreme concha or the highest concha. These concha are covered by mucous membrane. Spaces related to the concha are known as meati. The supreme meatus or the sphenoidal recess or sphenoethmoidal recess is a space seen above the superior nasal concha. The space seen below the superior nasal concha is the superior meatus. Space seen below the middle nasal concha is the middle meatus whereas the space seen below the inferior nasal concha is the inferior meatus. These meatuses or meati are lined by the respiratory epithelium. The picture here shows us these features. Right on top we see the cut end of the superior nasal concha. Space above it is the sphenoethmoidal recess. Next we see the cut end of the middle nasal concha. The space above it is the superior meatus and the space below it is the middle meatus. What we see inferiorly here is the inferior nasal concha and the space below it is the inferior meatus. Nasal concha. Concha bullosa. In 30% of individuals, the middle concha may be curved inferiorly or may be expanded by an enclosed air cell. Paradoxical turbinate. In 10% of individuals, the middle concha may have a concave medial surface. Agar nasi cells. The anterior ethmoid air cells that lie anterior to the ethmoid bulla are known as the agar nasi cells. The ethmoid bulla is nothing but a bony elevation or a bulge which is seen in the middle meatus and this is due to the presence of the middle ethmoidal air sinuses. The functions of the concha, they take part in warming and moistening the inspired air. They also decrease the force of the inspired air and regulate the flow of air through the nasal cavity. Let us now see the openings which are seen in these meatuses or meati. The sphenoethmoidal recess shows the opening of the sphenoidal air sinus. The superior meatus shows the openings of the posterior ethmoidal air sinuses. The middle meatus is the largest. Behind the middle concha, it shows presence of sphenopalatine foramen. It also shows presence of the ethmoidal bulla in the central area of the middle meatus. This ethmoidal bulla is due to the bulging of the middle ethmoidal air sinuses. The middle ethmoidal air sinuses open just above this bulla ethmoidalis. Below the bulla ethmoidalis, we see a semilunar hiatus or hiatus semilunaris. This is a crescent shaped groove which is seen between the bulla ethmoidalis which lies behind and above it and 
the uncinate process of the ethmoid bone which lies anterior and below it. This semilunar hiatus at its anterior end is expanded to form a funnel shaped structure which is called as the infundibulum. The anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris shows the opening of the frontal sinus via the infundibulum. Also, the anterior ethmoidal air sinuses open in the anterior part of the hiatus via the infundibulum. The posterior part of the hiatus semilunaris shows the opening of the maxillary sinus. The inferior meatus shows the opening of the nasolacrimal duct. The picture here shows us the presence of the three conchae that is the superior nasal conchus, the middle nasal conchus and the inferior nasal concha. Also seen are the spaces, the sphenoethmoidal recess, the middle meatus, the superior meatus middle meatus and the inferior meatus. So, this picture shows us all the three conchae and the four spaces related to these conchae. Let us see a better picture to understand the various openings which are seen in these meatae. This is the superior nasal concha. Above that is the sphenoethmoidal recess showing one opening and that is the opening of the sphenoidal air sinus. Below the superior nasal concha is the superior meatus which shows one opening of the posterior ethmoidal sinus. The middle nasal concha below it is seen the large space that is the middle meatus in the center showing a bulging which is the bulla ethmoidalis. On the bulla ethmoidalis we see the opening of the middle ethmoidal air sinuses. Below the bulla ethmoidalis we see the crescentric depression that is the hiatus semilunaris. Its anterior end is the funnel shaped infundibulum which receives the frontal air sinus and the anterior ethmoidal air sinuses whereas posteriorly it shows the opening of the maxillary sinus. So, the middle meatus has four openings for the middle ethmoidal air sinuses, the frontal sinus, the anterior ethmoidal air sinus and the maxillary sinus. Next we see the inferior nasal concha and below that is the inferior meatus which shows a single opening and that is of the nasolacrimal duct. So, these were the various openings which are seen in the meatae. Let us revise these openings again before we move further. So, in the sphenoethmoidal recess there is one opening that is of the sphenoidal air sinus. The superior meatus shows openings of the posterior ethmoidal air sinuses. The middle meatus which is the largest shows opening of the middle ethmoidal air sinuses on the bulla ethmoidalis. Below the bulla we see the hiatus semilunaris. Its anterior end of the infundibulum receives the frontal air sinus and the anterior ethmoidal air sinuses while its posterior end receives the opening of the maxillary sinus. The inferior meatus shows a single opening and that is of the nasolacrimal duct. So, these were the various openings seen in the meatae. Let us now go on to see the arterial supply of the lateral wall of the nose. To study the arterial supply, we can divide the lateral wall of the nose into four quadrants with the help of one vertical line and a horizontal line. These quadrants would then be the antero superior quadrant, the antero inferior quadrant, the postero superior quadrant and the postero inferior quadrant.
as is seen in this diagram the antero superior quadrant is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal artery which is a branch from the ophthalmic artery also some part is supplied by the posterior ethmoidal artery and the branch is coming from the facial artery the antero inferior quadrant is majorly supplied by the branches coming from the facial artery which is a branch of external carotid artery and also from branches that come from the greater palatine artery which is a branch of the maxillary artery the postero superior quadrant is supplied by the sphenopalatine artery which is a branch of the maxillary artery whereas the postero inferior quadrant is supplied by branches coming from the greater palatine artery we have another picture to again summarize the arterial supply of the lateral wall of nose the antero superior quadrant supplied by the anterior ethmoidal artery antero inferior quadrant supplied by branches coming from the facial artery that is lr branches of the facial artery and also a few branches coming from the greater palatine artery postero superiorly it is supplied by the sphenopalatine artery and postero inferiorly it is supplied by the greater palatine artery that is the arterial supply of the lateral wall of nose let us now see the venous drainage of the lateral wall of nose this can be divided into three areas as the anterior part intermediate part and the posterior part the anterior part venous drainage ultimately drains into the facial vein the intermediate part is drained into the pterygoid plexus of veins whereas the posterior part drains into the pharyngeal plexus of veins the same is seen in this picture as a schematic view the anterior part venous drainage draining into the facial vein the intermediate area draining into the pterygoid plexus of veins this pterygoid plexus of veins is seen in the infratemporal fossa related to the lateral pterygoid muscle while the posterior part of the lateral wall of the nose is drained into the pharyngeal plexus of veins let us now see the lymphatic drainage of the lateral wall of nose we can study this as the drainage from the anterior part and the posterior part lymph from the anterior part of the lateral wall of nose is drained into the submandibular lymph nodes while the lymph from the posterior part drains into the retropharyngeal group of lymph nodes and the upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes the same is depicted in this schematic picture lymph from the anterior part draining into the submandibular lymph nodes whereas lymph from the posterior part draining into the retropharyngeal and the upper deep cervical group of lymph nodes let us see the nerve supply of the lateral wall of nose again here we can divide the lateral wall into four quadrants the antero superior quadrant is supplied by the anterior ethmoidal nerve which is a branch coming from the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve the antero inferior quadrant is supplied by the anterior superior alveolar nerve which is a branch of the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve the postero superior quadrant the sensations are carried by the posterior superior lateral nasal nerve which is a branch coming from the pterygopalatine ganglion which is coming through the maxillary division of trigeminal nerve whereas the postero inferior quadrant is supplied by the greater palatine branch of the pterygopalatine ganglion coming via the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve let us see another picture showing the nerve supply the special sensations carried here are seen along the roof of the nasal cavity carried by the olfactory nerve endings these carry the sensations of smell the special sensations of smell carried by fibers or rootlets of the olfactory nerve which are seen along the roof of the nasal cavity
The remaining part of the lateral wall can be divided into four quadrants. Sensations from the antero superior quadrant carried by the anterior ethmoidal nerve. Those from the antero inferior quadrant are carried by the anterior superior alveolar nerve near the tip also by the lateral nasal or the external nasal nerve. Postero superior quadrant sensations carried by the posterior superior lateral nasal nerve and the postero inferior quadrant sensations carried by the greater palatine nerve. Now we go on to study the applied anatomy aspects of the lateral wall of nose. Examination of the nasal cavity. This is done by inserting a speculum through the anterior nares or the external nares or by means of a mirror which is held in the pharynx. Next is sinusitis which is inflammation of the paranasal air sinuses also giving rise to increased production of watery mucus which discharges through the nasal cavity. Next is the allergic rhinitis also known as common cold which is due to inflammation of the mucous membrane of the nasal cavity and the paranasal sinuses gives rise to thick mucus coming out from the nasal cavity, plurulent whitish discharge from the nasal cavity. Also inflammation of the mucosa can give rise to blocked nose and rhinorrhea. Nose bleed or epistaxis. This occurs due to nose picking. We have seen that the nasal cavity has got a rich blood supply, the vessels just being lying underneath the mucous membrane. So, nose picking can give rise to bleeding from the nose. Next would be the foreign bodies in the nose which are commonly seen in small children who will be introducing the foreign bodies into the nasal cavity. Anosmia or loss of the sensations of smell that occurs due to severe injuries involving the anterior cranial fossa and causing damage to the olfactory bulb or the olfactory nerve endings. Next we see the fractures of the anterior cranial fossa which may involve the meninges and in that case there would be cerebrospinal rhinorrhea where CSF or the cerebrospinal fluid would be draining or leaking through the nasal cavity. There could be spread of infection to the anterior cranial fossa through the cribriform plate of ethmoid or the nasal cavity. Infection can spread to the lacrimal fossa through the nasolacrimal duct. It may spread to the nasopharynx or the retropharyngeal soft tissues. Infection from the nose may spread to the middle ear cavity through the auditory tube and it may also spread to the pharynx as well as the larynx. These are all the areas which can get infected because of a primary infection in the nasal cavity. Thus we have gone through various aspects of the gross anatomy of the lateral wall of nose. We started off with a case scenario where now we can understand that a frontal sinusitis is going to give rise to the symptoms which were enumerated in the clinical case. We studied the case, we went on to study the various parts of the nasal cavity, structures forming the roof, the floor, the medial wall or the septum and the lateral wall. We further saw the details of the structures forming the nasal septum or the medial wall. We then moved on to the lateral wall of nose. We saw the three components skeletal, cartilaginous and cuticular. We went into the three parts of the lateral wall of nose that is the vestibule, the atrium and the region of the concha and the meatuses. We studied the concha, the spaces or the meati the various openings which are seen in the BATI. We then moved on to see the arterial supply, the venous drainage, the lymphatic drainage, 
and the nerve supply of the lateral wall of nose. And finally, we studied a few applied anatomy for aspects related to the lateral wall of nose. Thank you.